Hi, hi, hello. This is Brinda here. Hi, Manjiri. Hello, um, nice, to, nice, nice to be here. You. Yeah, nice to see you. Actually, I was not here last week and uh, I saw the video and it was very nice knowing about the Pitta Prakriti. And today we are here to talk about Pitta Vikriti, the signs and symptoms, and uh, how does Pitta goes out of balance and then what can you do about it. So yeah, I'll hand it over to you, Manjiri. Thank you so much. So for everyone, welcome back. Uh, we are doing a series with Health Onwards. We are talking about all the three doshas or mm -hmm. you know we are talking about vata dosh pitta and kapha and then we are also talking about the normalcy and the abnormalcy oh, so yeah. again mm -hmm. i'll start with a brief introduction that prakriti is anything that is its natural action that is its inherent quality so everything is normal in the pitta prakriti mm -hmm. right when it comes to vikruti again it's imbalance and that is the number one thing to understand and when we talk about, you know, um, different qualities of Pitta as well, a Pitta Prakruti is going to be something that's within its realm. A Vikruti is going to be when it's thrown out of balance. So that's the number one thing to understand. Yeah. All right. So today we'll focus on Vikruti and the like the imbalance. L imbalance. Yeah. So what pitta typically you know some qualities of pitta let's talk about that so mm -hmm. heat is the one main quality to pitta dosh right so pitta our body heat is determined by pitta so mm -hmm. pitta is the dosh or the energy that is made up of the combination of fire with a little bit of water in terms mm -hmm. of the five elements we yeah. have the five elements space air water fire uh, space air fire wa water and earth the sequence yeah. is really important and fire with a little bit of water make this pitta pitta dosh is the one that gives skin our color right okay. it gives us our color it makes our liver function really well mm -hmm. the absorption of nutrients you know any bio transformation in the body happens because of pitta when you okay. eat a chicken when you eat any plant they don't sit as plants in our body you know they, con they are converted into bio elements so the protein from the chicken that you're eating is absorbed into your body cells amino acids mm -hmm breaks down as amino acids has to be converted into your muscle protein the same with anything that you eat right the nutrients have to be bio assimilated this bio transformation happens due to pitta pitta is also responsible for your vision like when we look at things our eyesight you know has to do with pitta dosh uh, our digestion, our metabolism, if you have a sluggish metabolism, that's also because your pitta is functioning not too well, right? So these are all the things that are governed by pitta and the natural qualities of pitta are that it has this heat, mm -hmm. it has this sharpness, it has some fluidity or liquidity is what people say. The word is dravatva in Sanskrit. Uh -huh. It has slight oiliness. It's not super oily like kapha, but it has this slight oiliness. Uh, it has different colors as well. It's a very visual, you know, Pitta has different colors as well, except for white or red. It has this fishy odor as well. So there is a certain sour or, you know, acrid kind of smell. There is some pungent taste or sour taste and there is this fluidity. So these are natural qualities of Pitta mm -hmm. and they are the qualities of the dosh itself. But when they go out of balance is when your Pitta can be out of balance, right? So again, mm -hmm. any imbalance can be high attend qualities of a certain dosha or mm -hmm. an excess increase, an excess of dosha where it's creating issues or a depletion. So there can be, you know, there's one more called Samatva. I'm not going to go into that concept. Okay. But anything that is aggravation, it's increased beyond its capacity. It's creating a lot of havoc on the body. Mm -hmm. And how to understand this Pitta Vikruti, you know, when a Pitta is aggravated, it's way more in qualities. The simple thing is visualize a volcano erupting, right? Okay. So when a volcano erupts, you know, all the lava is kind of thrown out. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if you're having a lot of pitta aggravation, you become like a volcano, you know, if okay. you're having constant outburst, you know, if you lash out at people, which is very in characteristic for you, like mm -hmm. you could be an angrier person, you know, because pitta ko prakruti, pit people are very reactive, but suddenly you become like a volcano and you just blow on someone, you know, that's what is meant by pitta imbalance or pitta aggravation as well. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about some signs, you know, what happens when this pitta is increased, right? Sure. Yeah, so yeah. 
there is going to be burning sensation so mm-hmm. if you are having any burning sensation on your eyes if okay. you're having burning sensation in the feet if you're having burning sensation while you're urinating mm-hmm. or when whether you're pooping or any sign symptoms of you know uh burning anywhere in the body your eyes your scalp burns you know so there can be no burning without this heat without pitta that shows an increase in the pitta if you suddenly start feeling a lot of heat like when we talk about hot flashes in menopause right that's something that my clients tell me all the time that i'm i feel i'm getting a lot of hot flashes mm-hmm. so what these hot flashes denote is some kind of pitta imbalance where your mm-hmm. liver is heated up as well right okay. so that's another pitta vikruti sign so mm-hmm. excess heat excess heat you could feel all over your body mm-hmm. you could also feel in certain areas like your eyes get really heated up or mm-hmm. your head feels really hot you know okay. so these mm-hmm. are some signs now when people talk about inflammation mm-hmm. right inflammation is a word very loosely used everywhere mm-hmm. and inflammation right now in the holistic world you know they are attributing all the diseases to this inflammation right but an inflammation cannot happen without this pitta okay. so when we look at certain signs of inflammation the redness rubor Mm-hmm. calor is the heat right there is some pain as well associated so there is always going to be vata but okay. if you look at those you know there can be no inflammation without this pitta okay. and if you look at charak sahita the core mm-hmm. text you know um, of ayurveda one of the three main texts of ayurveda what we also see is the number one chapter in the treatment part or the chikitsa sthan is jwara chikitsa mm-hmm. a lot of people loosely translate it as you know the chikitsa of fever right okay. but mm-hmm. it's not fever it is any kind of inflammatory process where mm-hmm. always the pitta is going to be front and center so okay. whether you're looking for any conditions in the body an example i see a lot of histamine intolerance as well i mm-hmm. see a lot of digestive ulcerations acidity you know wherever you see an itis there is an inflammation mm-hmm. there is pitta involved okay. right so mm-hmm. this is something that you have to keep in mind any kind of abscess formation pus formation pitta is imbalance there if you're sweating a lot right if you are constantly sweating if mm-hmm. there is a lot of odor for your sweat if you have a lot of mouth odor as well right mm-hmm. usually that's to do with with liver if you have bad breath you're brushing 24/7 you're using listerine you're using all the mouth washes you can find <laughs> and but still the bad odor odor doesn't go yeah, yeah. Well, yeah so that's to do with your digestion and typically mm-hmm. it is related to your liver Mm-hmm. any kind of even itching can happen from the liver if there's redness if there's itching you know that's uh, that can happen with either liver or pitta related conditions mm-hmm. and redness again anything that's red any kind of rashes that you experience on your body can be a sign of pitta imbalance as well okay so this is this is all when the pitta increases or there is a uh, there's an excess of pitta but is is there an imbalance where it goes down as well yeah so when pitta is really lowered mm-hmm. there is going to be what we say you know discoloration or whitish you know so if you suddenly start looking very pale okay. which okay. is very common with anemia right so mm-hmm. when you have really low blood and blood is a pitta like you know tissue mm-hmm. so that can also be understood as a condition where your pitta is lowered right, right. so any kind of whitish discoloration or paleness can be a sign if there's absence of heat if you're feeling cold all the time which is another common sign of anemia right mm-hmm. that you you feel really start feeling cold um, so that's going to be when you know your pitta is really lowered now pitta in the body also can be understood as enzymatic function when we look at digestive tract right mm-hmm. so our enzymes play a huge role in the bio transformation of food and they are pitta like molecules so if you are not digesting food you know suddenly what ends up or you're not secreting enzymes that can also be understood as a sign of this pitta kshaya right so that's why you feel bloated you're constipated you're gassy because you don't secrete those enzymes right True. because the enzymatic function has gone low so that's also a sign of you know pitta um, okay. imbalance so what are the dietary changes we can incorporate in our like daily lifestyle manjiri to keep it in check 
So Pitta has very simple, you know, the aggravation is one of the most common things that mm-hmm. we say, right? And often what we also see is, you know, the heat is one factor in Pitta that's lacking in Vata and Kapha because we're talking okay. about different doshas, right? right? So Pitta has this heat. Mm-hmm. Hi. What's up? Hi. Yeah, there's a disturbance. Yeah. I'm Anjali. I can you hear, can you hear me or? Uh, now I can, yes. So let's talk. But your, yeah, but your video is kind of broken. Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, I don't know, the connection shows unstable. Okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Okay. So with Pitta, when we see this excess burning sensation, when we see this, you know, there's also a lot of fatigue associated with it. There's, there can be also excess bleeding, you know, so because I'm mentioning this Pitta, you know, some things I would like to add is, if you're having heavy menstruation, too much of bleeding, or mm-hmm. if you're bleeding through your nose constantly, or, mm-hmm. you know, you are having gastric bleeding or any other kind of bleeding in the bowels, that's also mm-hmm. related to Pitta, mm-hmm. right? So one thing is if you're experiencing the symptoms of excess Pitta, you mm-hmm. have to pacify it. You have to make sure you're bringing it back into balance. And mm-hmm. the three main tastes, you know, in Ayurveda, we talk about the six tastes. Each yeah. of the three tastes are going to balance a certain dosha. Okay. Each of the three tastes are going to aggravate a certain dosha, right? Okay. So okay. if we look at salty, sour, mm-hmm. and pungent, pungent can be understood as spicy. These are going to increase the pitta. So the first thing you need to do is stop eating foods that are spicy. Mm-hmm. So stop with your pickles. You know, if you're eating a lot of achar at your meals, you know, stop Mm -hmm. that. If you're Mm -hmm. having a lot of papadams or papad, you know, they're salty. So anything that's dried, dehydrated, all those salty preserved ones, you have to stop that. Mm -hmm. And even sour foods, right? So sour things, anything, you know, kefir, kombucha are very popular today. And Mm -hmm. these are provoking people's pitta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So everybody keeps drinking kombucha. Everybody is drinking sour uh, beverages even apple cider vinegar if you take it too much apple cider vinegar is very sharp as well it's Uh going to increase your pitta so Mm -hmm. if you have excess of this first thing is you need to stop right Mm -hmm. the three taste you need to incorporate is sweet so anything that's sweet tasting so rather than having sour fruits like Mm -hmm. raw mango or you know kachi keri which is sour if you have like a fully ripe one then that's Mm -hmm. a better option Right. So sour grapes, not really, but sweet grapes are going to cool balance your pitta. Right. Raisins are going to balance your pitta. So anything that's sweet, raisins are really good. So Mm -hmm. if you are having excess thirst, yeah, you're having sweating, you are having a lot of body heat. Mm -hmm. What you can do is, you know, soak some raisins in water. Yeah. Next morning, you can blend those and you can have those or you can chew on those. And this will help take the excess heat out of the body. Okay. Right. Okay. Another food that works really well for Pitta is any kind of bitter foods, you know, yeah. bitter taste bitter works God. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bitter God or anything that's bitter tasting, you know, even dandelion or arugula. So bitter tasting vegetables are going to help balance the Pitta. Balance. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. And sweet, sour and astringent as well. Right. Okay. So astringent is any like mung beans. Even tuar dal is a little bit acidic, you know, okay. if you're having any acidity issues. Um, so mung beans are really balancing the pitta as well. So ha- rather than having tuar, you can have mung beans. So that would be, you know, one thing. Try to cool down your body rather than heat it up. So again, you know, I see people going for saunas all the time or, you know, there were time when right now with COVID, it's different. But if you're maybe out in the sun, in mm-hmm. the afternoon sun for a long time because you want to get that vitamin D, yeah. at least protect your head, right? Okay. So that's my number one thing because you don't want your head to get too much heated up. Okay. Your head mm-hmm. is one of the most important marmasthanas. You want to protect it. So always wear a cap, 
and don't you know if you're a pitta prakriti then make sure you're not outside in the heat in the afternoon time you know okay. when it's really hot outside so protecting yourself is important mm-hmm. um, in the winter time in the sorry summer time is the pitta season so when there's a lot of outside heat do all the cooling procedures on the body right mm-hmm. so sandal wood if you have sandal wood paste super cooling to the body rose you can make like a rose drink you can have rose petals in your diet rose mm-hmm. petal jam known as gulkanda is also important to balance this pitta mm-hmm. so sweet uh, rose also helps with heart so if you want rose essential oil anybody who's struggling with a broken heart you know <laughs> okay. uh, it also yeah. helps healing of the heart right so pitta again is also intimately connected with our heart as well and there are different uh, kinds of pitta which we talk about in the body yeah. and one of the main ones that also governs our courage our intellect is situated in the heart region that's known mm-hmm. as sadhak pitta right okay. so mm-hmm. cooling your body making sure you're not getting too heated up is an important thing also you need to oil yourself slightly so if you take coconut oil and do a body massage that can also be cooling to the body okay. right okay. coconut water is again fantastic so coconut is a food that's cooling to the pitta okay. if you go for almond or sesame oil that's very heating most nuts are heating in nature yeah. coconut is cooling in nature right yeah. so coconut is not really a typical tree nut so it's very cooling in nature you can go for that wow. and yeah so these are a few things that can be really done to balance any kind of excess pitta mm-hmm. um, okay. a lack of pitta again you know you have to support your digestion for this digestive process if you're having a localized lack of maybe pigmentation like vitiligo then you have to go for certain treatments so mm-hmm. that is a bit mm-hmm. subjective okay Oh, that that is like a very uh, good information, like valuable information for people who have pitta as a uh, like pitta imbalance. And because we are uh, like going towards the summer after spring, we'll have summer here in Canada, and so it is very important to know how to cool the bodies if the summer is a pitta season. So thank you for that, Dr. Mandiri. I I do not see I see hi from Swati Swati there. Hi Swati. Yeah, anybody else watching us? You know. You can just uh, hashtag live, or if you want us, uh, if you're watching us later, you can hashtag replay so we know if you you have watched it later on. And if if at all you have any questions, just uh, throw your questions, and Dr. Manjiri would be there. I would coordinate the questions with her and give come back with the answers. Uh, and also, Manjiri, I wanted to talk about the the cleanse you are coming up with, and uh, this masterclass I attended was superb. So can you uh, let us know a little bit more about it? It's just Yeah, two days um, ahead from now. Yeah, so I'm super excited about the cleanse. You know, it is an Ayurvedic type cleanse. I'm saying Ayurvedic type because we are not really doing a proper panchakarma, or we are, you know, like I'm incorporated all the principles of Ayurveda here, mm-hmm. and. it is a food related cleanse right so it is going to be awesome i have 19 people signed up one or two or more like wanting to sign up so i'm waiting for their final consent but super excited about but it but you have more spots left i have more spots left yeah so i can take up to five more people if they are interested and yeah. this is a group cleanse that we are all doing you know so this is a group cleanse we are all a part of mm-hmm. it's food related cleanse you get recipes you also get you know our uh, tons of information you right. get a meditation and there is a amazing group of 19 women we've already started connecting sharing every single day i'm going to go twice live in that group yeah actually so, what i liked really uh, like the most was that it's a it's a nice uh, safe group you know where you can share what uh, your journey is yeah. through cleanse right and yeah. uh, it's it's private <laughs> yeah so and that, for 7 days you know i'll be su- supporting you i'll be guiding you right, right. because i'm right. there involved with you for 7 days right. again the season is the season where we can cleanse you know we could not do a lot of these cleanse in the winter time mm-hmm. because you know um, winter is very harsh to the body right and right now with the second lockdown everybody or stay at home everybody has this opportunity to take this and make this into a good thing for their own health you are muted vrinda okay yeah uh, yeah so i i think uh, swati has a question there uh, manjri uh, about apple cider vinegar cleanses pitta yeah. i heard mm-hmm. see apple cider vinegar again if you look at the qualities of apple cider vinegar you know it is going to be sour right but if you look at the quality it's also very sharp 
So in conditions of pitta excess, you do not use apple cider vinegar. So it cleanses pitta. I can't really say that's the word. It can increase the pitta, right? And one thing that people use apple cider vinegar is for digestion, for boosting their digestive enzymes, right? And if you have low or high stomach acid, apple cider vinegar is a really good test to do. So if you take a shot glass, put some apple cider vinegar and just drink it. And if you feel a lot of burning, you have too much acid secretion. If you have really low acid, you start feeling good, then you know, okay, I have low acid and I'm feeling really good with this apple cider vinegar. And if you just feel a slight warmth, then you know that, you know, your stomach acid is fine. So if you are having a lot of stomach acid and if you keep taking apple cider vinegar, it's going to create more harm, right? And again, with ulcers or gastritis or, you know, um, it's not like the best choice. So any kind of ulcerative conditions are related to Pitta. So you have to watch your Pitta very carefully. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So apple cider vinegar, I don't think like my personal opinion is it's not cleansing to the Pitta. Right. Okay. And Pitta Prakruti people should be a little bit careful because any kind of vinegars, whether it's apple cider or any other, you have to make sure that know what exactly like you can't take it for a long time if you have really poor digestion maybe mm -hmm. start taking it till the time your digestion rebalances but you mm -hmm. can't take it for a long long time so manjari what other drinks can pitta people take like uh, with uh, like other than coconut water what else do you suggest so, so any kind of greens you know greens can be really cooling to the body right mm -hmm. so if you're looking at you know any uh, green products, even like spirulina or moringa, like the powders I'm talking about, right? Neem is another fantastic herb when it comes to herbs. Mm -hmm. That is very like cooling to the body. Okay. Shatavari is again another herb that's cooling to the body as well as pitta. But Ayurvedic herbs always work with someone, you know, just don't take things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah don't take it, yeah. Yeah, but Moringa, if you're lo looking at it as a superfood or something like just to boost it, the powder especially, you know, will work with uh, the Pitta as well. Any kind of, do you have any greens powders in your store? Yes, I do have, uh, Manjari. I have Moringa and Neem. So I was just thinking about it. Yeah, okay. I can, for, uh, if someone asks, like I can recommend it to Pitta people. Yeah, or you can even put the links here in the video itself, sure. you know, so people sure. can at least know that there is an option. So again, you know, this is the season of cleansing. Yeah. This is also the season of Neem. You know, we just celebrated Gudi Padua. So thank you for all the comments. And I was draped in a sari. It was like a yeah, really good day. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. But one thing is, you know, the day Chaitra Padwa, you know, which is known as Gudi Padwa, mm -hmm. we all have neem traditionally. So traditionally, you wake up, you eat a few neem leaves, and that is considered to be our new year. So why do you start mm -hmm. a new year with bitter leaves, right? Yeah, because yeah. bitter is tonic to your body. Bitter right. is cleansing to pitta, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. it's also cleansing to your entire body. Mm -hmm. So neem, fantastic herb. Neem works for any kind of itching, any fungal, parasitic, any kind of mm -hmm. infections, it's slightly drying to the body. So that's mm -hmm. one thing you have to pay a little bit attention to. Works fantastic. Swati mm -hmm. Kasuri Methi is dried Methi, right? So Methi or fenugreek can increase your Pitta. It's a uh -huh. warming food. It's not a cooling food. An example is Palak's uh, spinach is cooling to the body. Spinach mm -hmm. is slightly warming or heating to the body. So if you have low pitta, low circulation, low digestion, if you need to balance your blood sugar, 100% methi works well. Um, mm -hmm. Fresh methi vegetables are better than like yeah. kasuri methi is very good for flavoring, but it doesn't have those nutrients that a fresh methi will have. And mm -hmm. I don't have it in the back right now, but it's very easy to grow your methi. Yeah, so yeah. People, seeds, fenugreek seeds, would we can do it. Yeah, yeah. So I posted, like, if you look at my pictures that I posted on this page, you know, yesterday, mm -hmm. there's a okay. whole bowl of methi that I'm growing mm -hmm. uh, from like maybe two tablespoons of seeds. So soak yeah. those methi seeds overnight, mm -hmm. take some soil, put those on the soil. And in five, six days, you'll have this much methi, you know, wow. and wow. maybe in a month's time, you'll have like a big methi and you can just harvest it from your backyard, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, 
it's really a good tonic so if you want to balance like increase the pitta methi will work not in the summer time spring time methi is fantastic you know don't But eat it in okay. yeah yeah so mm -hmm. hi tandra nice to watch you do you have any questions for me tandra or swati do you have any other questions i can see we have more people watching us so if you have your questions please let me know i'm um super happy to talk about it but yeah neem is another fantastic herb you know as we were talking about certain herbs uh, again moringa is another really good herb moringa also helps with detoxification of the body too right mm -hmm. so it can also aid yeah, yeah detoxification of the body um when it comes to certain herbs you mm -hmm. know so definitely and one thing that i also wanted to talk about is you know if you want if you have like any issues related to your teeth right so again a neem toothpaste is a good idea mm -hmm. right so if you have any kind of tooth issues or you know like the oral hygiene we were talking about you know so using even a no neem teeth toothpaste is going to be a good idea to get started with your day and um, i also wanted to give you a shout out you know that i know you have some really good things you know in your uh, uh, i i sent you on the private chat uh, so you can put it on the comments uh, manjali i yeah. sent the link for moringa and neem yeah and i also wanted to give you a shout out that you have this routine bundle as well you know so yeah. you have trifala you have the kapha oil you have this tea tree with neem toothpaste yeah that's that. specifically for spring uh, spring yeah yeah so anybody watching this you know if you want to get um the products you know you can always get it right here you don't like it's it's a one stop kind of shop where you know you can pick yeah. it up and uh, you can get lots of ayurvedic bundles you can get lots of this customization as well so even just getting in touch with vrinda she can definitely guide you yeah, with, you know just dm me and we can customize the bundle for you as per the needs as yeah. per your doctor maybe the ayurveda doctor you are uh, in touch with whatever they say we can just customize the bundle for you yeah so tandra you can get it on the health onwards you know i have posted the link as well so i'm just going to post quickly the website so that's also where you can check it out and if you have questions you can also get it there if you are local so if you are watching this you are you know yeah if you are from mississauga yeah. Bram brampton you can pick it from me yeah 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 and if you are based in sarnia you can go to blue water nutrition so that's another option you have right so moringa we have it at blue water nutrition uh mm -hmm. the neem to paste that too we will have it here but if you are looking at the spring starter bundle it's a really good price as well and i have sat down with you know vrinda to really yeah. design it yeah right? the credit what? goes to you for you know letting me know that what specifically works for us for spring in terms of ayurveda so thank you for that and no you're most welcome and see this is something that needs to be decided I mean, added to your diet or lifestyle you know even the lifestyle if you change your lifestyle mm -hmm. right for example you were talking to me about low pitta conditions what if your digestion is really poor a copper tongue cleanser right when we look at copper it's going to stimulate your digestion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you're struggling with a lot of digestive issues and you know, if you have too much pitta then copper might not be the best solution but most people that i know lack the digestive capacity you know mm -hmm. most people have issues so mm -hmm. that's when a copper tongue cleaner will help because copper is also antibacterial mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so any fungus bacteria if you have lots in your mouth you know copper tongue yeah. cleaner can really help yeah. um so that's in the bundle the neem toothpaste we were talking about you know yeah, so that's that's, also yeah so neem with tea tree, tree tree oil that's there the nasya oil is there mm -hmm. trifala trifala you know here everybody calls it trifala mm -hmm. not yeah. trifala mm -hmm. but it's three three means three, three. fala means any kind of fruit mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so the three most potent fruits are mm -hmm. trifala Mm -hmm. and trifala is one combination in ayurveda that works to detoxify the body mm -hmm. also rejuvenate the body so it also works as a rasayan right, right? Yeah. so if yeah. you take it with ghee it's going mm -hmm. to work as a rasayan if you take it with hot water it does lekhan it's going to clean your fat out it's mm -hmm. going to clean any excess things that's going to detoxify it's also really high on the orac scale which measures the antioxidant value 
right yeah. so yeah. it has three you know ayurvedic herbs or fruits known as amla or amla berry mm-hmm. hari takki and bibi tak right yeah. so these are all the best fruits mm-hmm. which are combined together and they are all they balance all the three doshas amla specially is pitta balancing right so we are talking about pitta imbalance and this is also important because in india people are going through extreme heat yeah right yeah. Yeah. so there is more than the spring season it's actually getting like super hot may is the summer season yeah, in summer. india and in certain states you know it's already 40 degrees plus you know i know everybody sweating it's just crazy so mm-hmm. amla or avla you know mm-hmm. you can make like murabba which is the sugary syrupy thing that we do you know yeah, but even yeah. or just mis- dry it up in the sun yeah but even rock sugar you know we are not talking about the refined sugar we are talking about khadi sakhar okay. is cooling to the body right is it is it so, mishri mishri yeah so okay. mishri is rock sugar mm-hmm. that is cooling to the body rose mm-hmm. is cooling to the body sandalwood is cooling to the body also sabja they are not holy basil seeds i think i posted them as holy basil seeds but that was my mistake uh they are sweet basil seeds you know so we have it available easily in indian grocery stores yeah. in india you can find sabja pretty much yeah. any grocery so, store yeah faludas and everything of that yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 the faluda seeds perfect so faludas you know you can make it at home Mm-hmm. don't add too much of the sugary syrup you can make your own rose syrup you can get like a low sugar rose syrup you know here yeah. we have too much sugar in the west but any rose syrup with faluda you know seeds can help cool your body down yeah. right so those are a few things also there's isab gol or psyllium husk i don't know if you have it on your yeah, store yeah 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 so, so if mm-hmm. yeah so people who have a lot of constipation and they have excess heat so mm-hmm. having an everyday bowel moment can help get rid of this excess heat from the body mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so for that psyllium husk or isab gol works really well right mm-hmm. and isab gol is a fiber it works two way so if people have a lot of diarrhea it can also help bind the stool mm-hmm. and for people who are constipated it can also help get rid of this excess pitta you know yeah. from yeah. the body so mm-hmm. hi rashmi um tai how are you today oh it's evening in india yeah good evening yeah so any wow. other questions we had a really good discussion today yeah. so yeah so for those you know like start incorporating you know some thing that are good for your health yeah. and mainly stay safe you know take care of your immunity right lower your inflammation the more inflammation you have the less immunity you will have and yeah. currently because of the pandemic you know the numbers are increasing everywhere we are at the stay at home lockdown here in ontario yeah. Yeah. in india there's curfew like everywhere there are so mm-hmm. many things going mm-hmm. on right so mm-hmm. if you take care of your health you know things like neem or certain things you know uh, even guruchi is really good um, yeah. for your immunity yeah. again it's a rasayan herb so herbs always work with someone before you take it but guruchi i'm hearing a lot like even in india people are taking a lot of giloy yeah yeah Which yeah. I do have in a, a, a capsule form on my website. Yeah, guruji so powder is very to, hard to take. Yeah, that's why capsule are, are the best forms. I think. But anyway, yeah. I just had a quick question. Yesterday, I was um, going through some random facts you have posted on your uh, Instagram. I thought uh, so. I will just talk about it. That seventy to eighty percent of the immunity is related to our gut, and that is the reason cleansing is important. How is that related? Because I have been thinking like it's all about the re- respiratory system. So can you just let us know a little bit about? It? see what happens is your gut bacteria right we all talk about this probiotics and the gut bacteria but they are not discovered today you know hundreds and thousands of year ago in ayurveda we have talked about this that your vat dosh right yeah, yeah. the pelvic region is very important and that also governs a lot about your immunity mm-hmm. so when you have this a lot of these bad bacteria yeah. or bad yeast you are not creating certain nutrients mm-hmm. you know or your immune system is constantly busy fighting this bacteria right yeah. so your mm-hmm. immune system is constantly overwhelmed okay. so a simple example is even food as sensitivities food allergies that we all experience yeah. people who have bad bacteria in the gut are going to have more skin rashes more allergies mm-hmm. because your immune system is kind of involved there right so that is how immune system is very important and from an ayurvedic perspective you know what you mm-hmm. eat 
yeah has to go through different layers right mm-hmm. and after mm-hmm. all the tissues are kind of converted you know we go through plasma or rasa dhatu plasma is a very loose correlation uh plasma lymph like any fluids that's the first tissue then the blood comes muscle fat and you know seven layers seventh is the reproductive tissue mm-hmm. and then whatever is formed is called the mala right mala is any of the wastes in the body mm-hmm. but these wastes you know like they feed those bacteria so okay. if you are not having fiber for example you know mm-hmm. fiber we can't break it down but the bacteria get it as their food mm-hmm. so if you are not eating any fiber they are not getting their food and they secrete certain substances that are necessary for our immunity okay, okay. right so okay. your okay. diet bal- influences their diet right mm-hmm. they yeah. don't get the diet they are going their immune system is going to be you know our immune system is going to thank be worse and for that i will i've been scratching my mind thinking that okay how is this correlated thank you for your explanation no but there is there's a lot of things to talk like this itself is an hour topic because uh-huh. you know there is another thing what we call gut brain there is a nervous system that is situated in the gut region which is known as enteric nervous system right mm-hmm. and it's it has an almost independent operation as compared to the other nervous system right it works by itself it's mm-hmm. called the gut brain it has its own intelligence and a lot of the nutrient absorption and all happens mm-hmm. there you know so mm-hmm. one answer is all the vital factors for immunity you're going to get it from the nutrients if you mm-hmm. don't absorb the nutrients then you're deficient right That's so these right. are a few things so cleansing your body extremely important especially right now in the western countries you know in the northern hemisphere we are in spring in india we are already in summer right yes, yes, yes. so this you know might not work for you but anybody who's based here like we need to clean this excess kapha you know i am a little bit congested myself i'm having yes. a lot of mm-hmm. um, turmeric milk i'm having a lot of you know like uh, decongestants myself so mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot of recipes that i've tried and tested and i'm cleansing with all of those people who are yeah. in my group you yeah. know so I'm i am excited. i'm excited to be on the group manjeet yeah. thank you for that sandra has a question why i get sometimes pain on the top of a belly button so again you know it could mean a lot of things i can't exactly tell you Mm-hmm. why you get the pain unless i know a little bit more about you right mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. the pain could be because of constipation as well right mm-hmm. sometimes if you have irritable bowel syndrome you can get pain anywhere in your stomach mm-hmm. sometimes any kind of excess acidity can cause pain in the stomach as well okay. right so mm-hmm. sometimes if you're eating certain things that are not working well for you will cause the pain sometimes there can be few parasites you know and parasites when i say everybody's like oh my god you know i don't think i have worms but see if you have animals in your home and i love animals you know i had i've had two dogs so far i love animals so nothing against the animals but they are going to be out and about everywhere and they expose you to a lot more things right so mm-hmm. these are all like the things you have to rule out you know so it's very hard for me to say that why but see what's happening you know is it coming from the digestive tract are you having sensitivities to some foods again the location of the pain is very important if it's on your right quadrant sometimes it's to do with the liver if it's lower in the pelvic region mm-hmm. right side could be appendix or ovary center could be you know more related to your bowel so different like i can't give you an exact answer for your question i'm sorry maybe maybe she can reach out to you for your yeah 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 of uh, females consultation yeah yeah we started chatting and then we can talk more tandra sure. for sure sure thank you so much manjiri it has been a wonderful session today and we'll see you uh, do you have your radio session next uh, saturday no no i'm i'm good i think i'm good for the summer now so i don't think i have anything scheduled in may um itchy symptoms around the body after a bath if not already so one thing again if you're having itchy symptoms around the body after having a shower which was not before first number one thing you have to do is check if you're reacting to the product mm-hmm. right if you are using a body wash if you're using a soap that has been having any reactions to you mm-hmm. try to avoid that right mm-hmm. so really you have to focus on you know making sure that you are using 
body products that are not and this is the number one thing that i see as well right so a lot of the times when you come to the clinic you know i test people for uh, allergies i test people for you know different products that they use mm -hmm. and sometimes it's actually the body wash that they are using you know which has chemicals see one thing you all have to realize is that your skin is our largest excretory organ as well mm -hmm. but it's also having this capacity to absorb things right mm -hmm. and when there's going to be absorption there can also be reactions Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. other thing is if you're breaking out if you are a pitta prakruti if you take a very hot water bath then you can have itchy or you know redness or rash like symptoms but number one thing change the product right um, a lot of people react to these chemicals and sometimes you know you have no idea what's added in uh, so, so, washing yeah, yeah. laundry detergent or the body washes and um Vrinda has like a lot of body care products as well yeah, which are natural like then, yeah natural products uh, so yeah they can be used but yeah first she has to get it tested like if if she's really allergic yeah. to the yeah or or change it or again as we mentioned you know i had talked to you hanka about oatmeal right so oatmeal bath is you can take like uh, a cup of oatmeal put it in bath water and soak right mm -hmm. or you can also get oatmeal soaps you can also get goat milk soap which is less allergenic right mm -hmm. uh, you can get aloe vera aloe vera is another good gel that can stop with the itching mm -hmm. right so if you're having random itching you know aloe vera works for burning as well as itching you know both mm -hmm. so that is also something you can definitely try but itchy symptoms after a bath if not already check the body products change mm -hmm. it right mm -hmm. and see if you're still getting issues okay yeah no this was a really good discussion so thank you everyone before we hop off one more thing i'm interviewing excuse me dr ashish paul right now on my channel and we are going to talk about how to conceive naturally so if you are somebody who's trying conception if you are struggling with conception or something i would love for you to attend this free talk and it's going to be a general discussion but in case of no chemical products oh okay so hanka are you using a lot of hot water right so if you take a super hot water bath so change the temperature of the water that you're showering with maybe if you're doing like super hot maybe go a little bit cooler and see if that makes a difference right or if you're using a certain scrub you know sometimes we use loofahs and scrubs as well so yeah. sometimes you're not using chemicals in your uh, products but if you're using like a plastic loofah or something you know mm -hmm. so uh, we can talk more but try this or change the temperature of the bath water mm -hmm. don't use too hot water and that might give you a better you know uh, relief yeah so again sorry going back join me in 15 minutes we're going to talk more about how to conceive naturally mm -hmm. and that's going to be a good discussion as well yeah any other questions related to today's topic if in case you have any questions in or not live right now or even if you're live maybe you can send us the questions and we'll come back with the answers and see you all uh, next saturday on the same platform at 10 o'clock and we'll talk about kapha prakriti and i'm very excited because i am kapha so i'm kapha. Really excited yeah i I'm like half, half kapha half pitta so okay yeah so i'm very very excited to uh, be there and learn from um, from you manjari thank you so much well, thank you thank you bye thank you have a good day bye 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 everyone